Hello YouTube, it's Lion here with Hobbies of Man once again, and today we are doing another um, light novel review. Today we're going to be reviewing Reign of the Seven Spellblades Volume 3. This should be the last video that I have over stuff that I read over the holiday break that I had. Um, so I'm really excited to get through it, but yeah, Reign of the Seven Spellblades was written by Bokuto Uno, uh, as you guys can see right there. And the illustrations are done by Ruria Miyuki. This is a uh, magic school setting story. The genre is fantasy adventure. Um, it has a magic school genre spin to it as well. And uh, you can almost call this dark fantasy, but it's not exactly like that dark. Like dark fantasy definitely implies a certain kind of like uh, depth and darkness and kind of this more interesting and powerful like exploration of you know evil and stuff like that that's not necessarily what this is but this is definitely darker than something like harry potter so there you go um the demographic for this is young adult um that's because it's a light novel i don't necessarily think that there's uh, a different way of denoting this i mean i guess if you look at the manga for it it should be a, sh a shonen um but i'm not exactly sure and um Adaptations wise, this does not have an anime, but it does have the manga, which is being published by Yen Press as well. I, I think they're actually up to volume three of the of the manga adaptation, uh, which I think still is only covering the first volume. So there you go. Um, other than that, yeah, the premise here for this volume is basically that following the situations that occurred in volume two, Oliver and his friends want to try to go and find their friend Pete. However, because they're first years and they're only in their second semester, if I remember correctly, it's strongly advised that they don't do this because um, they have to go deep into the labyrinth and fight this um, older fourth year character called Ophelia, who is, I think, this lady right here. Um, and that's going to end up badly for them and for everyone involved. So they shouldn't. And the older years are definitely the ones that are, in, that are in charge of this expedition to try to go save Pete and all the other people that have been taken. However, Oliver and company don't really uh, think that this is the right thing to do. And so they also happen to go into the labyrinth. Uh, Oliver and Chella go. And of course, um, our, our friend, uh, what's, what's her name? Uh, the Asian girl. Let me see if I can find her name really quickly. Uh, Nanao. Uh, Oliver, Chella, and Nanao go down into the dungeon, and they're actually helped by this older character called Vera Milligan, who happened to be an antagonist in the first book. So um, it's pretty interesting how that kind of works. And of course, they go to save their friend, and so that's the general idea of this uh, book. So it's actually pretty good. I, I thought it was uh, well done. I liked it quite a bit. So let's get into the proper uh, review here. The plot line is pretty solid. There's nothing too egregious. Nothing uh, happens that you think, hey, this is just plot armor. Everything that happens happens for a reason. The reason why Mer Vera Milligan joins the expedition with Oliver, Chella, and Nanao is because she wants um, Katie to, you know, be part of her, um, her, her research projects. Um, and so in order to gain Katie's trust, she decides to go help her friends. And uh, she's gonna go help them, uh, you know, find Pete. However, she also happens to be someone that knows Ophelia quite well. And so she's able to a uh, fight her, um, maybe not on par, but like definitely like better than all of the first year students that went. Um, and so she's actually a very meaningful character for the plot line there. Other than that, there's a, a few other situations that occur in the volume. Uh, for example, Cella, Nana, and Oliver have this, uh, you know, reaction to the fact that Pete is gone, right? And of course, their other friends do too, like um, Greenwood guy and Katie. Um, both of them want to help out as well. But Katie and um, the other guy, I can't remember his name, um, they are basically not powerful enough to go into the dungeon. Um, and Oliver, Chella, and Anau aren't either, but they're more powerful than you know, their weaker friends. And so they decide that it is their duty to do this. Um, and in order to try to safeguard their weaker friends, they also ask them to stay behind. Their friends do, 
and pass on some tools that might help them in the future. Katie passes on Vera Milligan and uh, the plant guy, I can't remember his name, uh, passes on these special, uh, very high quality plant tools that help them uh, do certain things. So um, overall, I think that the structure of it is really well done. I like that everything moves forward um, logically and, and with a lot of sense. I like that, you know, the characters all are in the place they have to be because they have to be according to their character. Um, I like their personality forces them into certain places uh, and certain actions. And I also like that we learn a lot about Ophelia, the character, the person, as we learn, as we have uh, the team go down into the darker areas of the dungeon into level three, I think, floor three, which is deeper than we've uh, gone before, right? So I think it's pretty cool. Ophelia's story is actually really, really interesting. Uh, she's basically this like succubus character. Um, and because of this, she was basically treated as a broodmare. Um, and because that happens, she basically has a very uh, unhappy outlook about life. However, she went to the school, Kimberly Academy, found friends, found relationships that she cared about. And then because of her previous trauma, she developed this kind of like uh, fixation for one of the characters uh, introduced. And so this causes her to go on this kind of evil rampage. And eventually she gets so good at her magic that she manages to achieve uh, the ultimate expression of her magic. But this leads to a chaotic situation that occurs in the book. So I think that's really, really interesting. Um, the way Bokuto Uno just kind of interweaves the character story with the actual happenings of the book is very good. The way it ties in and the character work is actually really, really amazing. So yeah, uh, like I said, in terms of characters, Ophelia is really interesting. I like her a lot. I think that she um, would be a cool character to see come back later. But the ending of the book makes it seem like that's not a possibility. However, this is manga and anime. And of course, they can always come back in a certain way. Um, but I think that her character was really, really interesting um, and very powerful. And again, deals with this darker aspect of the magic that is in this world, right? So I thought that was really good. I like Alvin, which is the guy that's connected to her. Uh, his character was pretty interesting. He's a very kind of general, like, good guy character with a lot of spunk and shonen protagonist vibes. Um, but he also has this kind of, um, you know, aspect to him that is not, like, as wholesome as you would think. So that's pretty cool. The Sword Roses are, of course, Oliver, Chella, Nanao, Katie, Pete, and uh, the Greenwood guy. I can't remember his first name. Um, and they're all the they're all the first year team. They have this idea that they can work together for the rest of their lives, for the rest of their time at Kimberly, which is something similar to Alvin and the way that he, uh, you know, recruited Ophelia to be part of his uh, friend group. And um, there's this kind of parallelism. And I really like that, you know, all of the characters there are important to each other and to um, the, the, the plot line. So I think it's really well done. Overall, the characters are really nicely done. Um, very well written. So yeah, in terms of world building, it's great. The magic is dark as fuck, of course. It's very, very interesting. The magic families are really cool because this is a clear reason why old magic, families with, old, with magic uh, for generations would, of course, think that they're better than families without magic. So in Harry Potter, pure bloods and, and non-pure bloods are in conflict for what is basically pride. It makes no sense, right? There's no reason why an, a pure blood person is better than a non-pure blood person, either a half blood or a muggle or like a muggle born or whatever, um, because there's no actual physical reason, right? Their magic isn't better. Their magic isn't stronger. The only reason why Voldemort is so powerful is because he happened to be really powerful. Um, and so, uh, it, it doesn't make sense that, you know, there would be this conflict, this ideological conflict, because it's not backed up by any actual physical reasons, right? But in this case, there is definitely a reason why you would think that old families are better than new families, right? Why Ophelia or Oliver or Chella are better than Katie and Pete and um, the Greenwood guy, right? And that's because these old families have magic that is deeply ingrained into their physical bodies, right? It's kind of like a Keke Genkai from Naruto, right? So it's pretty interesting that they kind of make that happen. 
And of course, it's very cool that, you know, these magical families have this magic because so many people in their family worked it or because they uh, kind of developed a connection with a magical creature or something like that. And the end goal is to find the maximum, the best uh, version of that ma magic. And of course, at that point, like the family has finished their quest, but it also kills the wizard doing it. So I think that's very, very interesting. I thought it was just so, so cool. So yeah, um, there you go. That's the world building. The world building is really, really good. In terms of art, I think that the different pieces of art that we get are really great. I actually like the color versions a lot more than the not colored versions. Um, that's not necessarily always the case, but it's generally, you know, accept, accepted that, you know, hey, stuff in color is nicer. But uh, sometimes it's not the case. Like, I think it was in Toradora. In Toradora, I think the, the non-colored versions look better than the actual colored editions of, of the different uh, pieces of art that are in the novel. So, you know, kind of to each their own there, I guess. Um, so, yeah, in terms of fan service, I think there is some... But I can't actually remember specifically anything that really happened. I think um, the only thing that happened is Milligan kind of makes um, some crude jokes with Oliver in order to get him to calm down. Other than that, I can't remember anything other, uh, any other specific examples. But of course, there, there's always a little bit of fan service in all of these things since it is manga and anime. Now, in terms of rating this a 5 out of 5, it's very, very good. I just love the the way that we get exposition through developing a character story i think that's really well done i really like that i like that we got a lot of world building through the development of ophelia so yeah um that, that's basically it there in terms of recommendations i definitely recommend this title i think that you guys should definitely read it and in terms of similar titles to this um of course there's um uh, harry potter itself which is probably a big inspiration for this there's also mashal which is also kind of a harry potter parody there is black clover um, which is another magic setting uh, system. However, that's not a magic school. Um, and I think it's actually quite good. In terms of other magic school settings, other than Mashal and Harry Potter, I'm not too sure. I haven't read that much magic school stuff in uh, Japanese media. So um, I don't have that many other recommendations. So there you go. That's, uh, that's all I have to say. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe, and comment down below. Let me know what you thought. And uh, thank you guys very much for watching the video. I really do appreciate it. See you guys later.